Hey guys, Wolfie here. This is Ruby Volume 8 and Chapter 5. The, this is uh, the 12th of December 2020, so a few things to go over here before I go any further. So, first and foremost, I am on my way to work as I am recording this, so I do, I'm going to try to keep this, you know, not too long, but not too short. So I am in my face covering because that is required by both uh, public transportation that I use to get to work as well as my job. So with that, um, that bit out of the way, so I'm doing this one day ahead of time. And that is because due to a real life situation, some stuff has come up where I will be busy all day tomorrow. I simply will not have the time to record then. So I am pushing this up one day early. So with that, like I said, I am on my way to work. I also have like my face covering on, which is required. So with that bit out of the way, so this is pretty much volume eight, chapter five, the synopsis, what I think about it, and as well as some stuff I think will probably be happening. And what I think about the whole thing with rent from chapter four to chapter five, so that's that on that. With that, the usual disclaimer comes along. Any opinion in this video is my opinion and my opinion only. So we're just gonna jump straight into it. So with Amity, Ruby has a chance to get her message out. Question is, will she be able to do it? Will it be broadcasted out for the rest of the world? Now, for those of you who are first members like myself, we already know the answer. However, this just came out to the public today, and we do know the answer. She does get, the message does come out. It comes at a pretty damn big price. Because we know that Watts switched out a chip, and things aren't looking so good for Penny. We simply don't know where she is. Now, with that bit out of the way, what do I think about certain aspects of this? Now, for the overall volume, this is what Rooster Teeth desperately needed. Volume 8 so far, in my personal opinion, is one of, this is one of the best volumes they've ever had. Perhaps the best since their early days. And by the early days, we're talking volumes 1 through 3. And we do know that volume 3, spoiler alert! We do know that at the end of volume three, Pyrrhic dies. So, because of the end of volume eight, which is next year, there's going to be a major death. And I think this is going to be Nora's swan song. And the reason why I think this is um, going to be Nora's swan song with this volume is because she had so much dialogue, so many lines in volume seven. It's that... And I kind of, you have to, some of those who know The Walking Dead, you kind of know how this tends to go. Anyone who has a lot of dialogue tends to die at some point soon after. And I do feel Nora is that case. Because, and this is and one of the reasons why I had to really think about this just now, is who she's based upon. Norse mythology. Thor, the god of thunder. He was given a venomous strike which turned out to be fatal. And the thing is with mythology, gods and goddesses, that sort of thing, once people stop believing in them, they die. They're not as truly immortal as we think they are. And that's the thing with Norse mythology, and this is another thing with Nora's case. So, unfortunately, I do feel that at the end of this volume, Nora's going to be dead. And the varying actions where Arya would, he's got to have blood on his hands. I also feel Blake's going to say have a role in this. Because you know that Blake saying, you know, hey, do what only Nora can do. So this may come back to haunt Blake and Arya would more so. So Blake might have a little bit of blood on her hands, but it's going to be, the most of the blood is going to be on Iron. Ironwood's going to get exposed. North's death will be perhaps the, the thing that kind of turns the tides on Ironwood. Make him, see, make him expose him as one who you don't think he is who he says he is. 
He's not in the right mind frame. But she's going to be tip of the iceberg in that realm. Because you have the fact that Ironwood shot Oscar towards the end of Volume 7 unprovoked. And the beginning of Volume 8, Ironwood shoots a council member unprovoked. Meaning that Ironwood's not thinking rationally. And it's feeding off what creates the grit. So this is going to be a swan song for Nora. And this is going to expose Arnie. Now I think Weiss will be having quote unquote Ironwood's blood. Because she knows of the fact of what he was doing back in, which is back in volume 4. About him locking down Atlas. Now the reason why I say this is because... If Ironwood, you know, did the whole thing with locking down Atlas, then how come Tyrion, Watts, Cinder, and Neo were able to get in without any issues, yet Ruby and company had problems getting in? This becomes a big thing for Ironwood and not the way he's going to get exposed. I think Salem is going to kill him. I do feel, though, as well, Cinder is going to become human no more. Because, and I base this off the intro where she's grabbing her arm. I don't think Sidra's going to become human any longer and makes her even more prone to Ruby. And the reason why I feel that way about Cinder is because of dialogue between Cinder and Salem around volume 4 or 5 where Salem was saying, you got to be careful with people like Ruby, there's only so much I can do. Now, this, I do feel this is going to be exposing some cracks with Salem herself, not just Oz. Because if, because we already know that Oz's powers are dwindling. It's probably the same thing with Salem as well. Because if Salem says something like, there's only so much I can do, something ain't adding up on Salem's end. And that's all I have to say about the whole thing with Cinder and Salem, you know. I think we're going to be seeing Salem gain overconfident. She's not going to, she may lose this one, but of course for Ruby and company, this comes at a very big price with Nora's death. Now regarding the whole thing with Ren, Prim from Volume 8, Chapter 4 Ren to Volume 8, Chapter 5 Ren, it's one of those things I'm like, I have to wonder, how did he snap out of that? And it's one of those things it's like I'm still thinking about, but not in a bad way. So, it's one of those things it's like, I'm like, wow. I mean, he somehow stepped out of it, but how? But, it's certain, when it comes to like editing all that stuff, I do understand it probably happened off screen, which I could understand. So, with that, you know, the whole thing with John, you know, being, like, the more rational person, you know, the one who can think a little bit more clearly, I do see John lasting for quite some time. Now, another thing in the intro where I do see, like, the whole thing, you have, like, the whole thing with Ren, John, and Nora, it's like, I do, like I said, I do feel Nora's going to be dead at the end of this volume, and her blood is going to be on mostly Ironwood's hands, but Blaze could have a little bit on her as well because of what she suggested. So it's one of those things, it's like the whole thing with Nora there. And then Penny, I'm like, I'm not so sure what's going to happen to her. But if she does become fully human at the end of all this, it'd be a miracle in itself. Now, the whole thing with Ironwood, again, the whole thing from Sid that's coming along since Volume 4... That's going to be one of those things that haunts Ironwood in the end. The fact that he's working with Watts, and Watts is reporting to Salem. The whole thing with Penny and Nora, he's going to have more blood on his hands than he thinks. And it's not going to end well for him. Now, Ruby and company will get a major victory here. Because, you know, they were able to get that message out. But Nora dies as a result. So that's all I have for this particular video. So 
for volume eight, chapter six, I, I don't know when it's going to be filmed, but I, if I do have time, it'll be a week from tomorrow. If I don't, it'll be like the same thing with today. So with that, I am done with this video. So with Wolfie here, signing off, I will catch you all on the flip side.